how you don't know your car is th thank you anyways guys a few days back i had dropped a video and i talked about jd have took over the sneaker market and what i intentionally didn't mention is what that means for Foot Locker. and today that's exactly what we're going to talk about for the record i'm done trying to make y'all comfortable that's right for the record you ain't trying to grow any stuff. Yeah, before I do a deep dive into the video, here's a quick history about Foot Locker. The first Foot Locker store opened in California back in 1974. But the company could trace its roots back to like F.W. Woolworth. Remember Woolworth? I do. Because Woolworth is a company that was founded in 1879. It literally expanded its retail reach like in the mid 2000s, the 20th century rather, by acquiring GR Kidney. And at the time, they owned the Foot Locker brand. And as Woolworth flagship started declining, they kind of folded the company and rebranded it to what we know it now as Foot Locker back in 2001. And right now there's literally a little under 800 Foot Lockers in existence in the United States. If you guys have watched my videos, I got a few gripes about Foot Locker that I don't like. And as you guys know, my channel is literally predicated on finding deals and steals. And in Foot Locker, there is none. This is the yellow ochre, and you can find this shoe on sale pretty much everywhere. But here, don't get me wrong, Foot Locker used to be innovative when it first started out. First we used to do the antiquated system, well, formerly known as the raffle, but now they went to the flex program. And literally, you could sign up for a raffle on the app, the Foot Locker app that is. If you want a shoe like this, like this sixes, just reverse Oreo, you go on the Foot Locker app, sign for the raffle. If you win a reservation, you pick it up the next day. And I thought that was cool until shoes started sitting. Now the reservation apps is a ghost town. I'm sure no one that wants a pair of shoes go to reservation app. They just literally pull up and cop, which is not a bad thing. Because if you're on the market for a pair of Air Jordan 1 high OGs, they got you. However, this one is on sale, but it's the only retro Jordan that released in recent times that I have found on sale. $119, not bad, but I have found these cheaper. Now we are in the Foot Locker House of Hoop section. The House this hoop is dedicated to ball athletes, basketball players, football players. It's literally its own separate store for a unique niche sports and house of hoops and foot locker are neighbors and some foot lockers you will find house of hoops but you will not find a foot locker in a house of hoops literally the same company but just two technically different stores but foot locker do have some acquisitions and let's talk about those now foot locker aka woolworth acquired champ sports back in the 80s now there was no particular date on when the acquisition occurred but they folded it right into the company from day one and they've been rocking out since the objective was to aim to capitalize on growth popularity and the athletic apparel and footwear so you guys already know they've been selling shoes like this since day ones back in the 80s then these joints came out like in 80s anyways and it was probably selling for super super cheap nothing changed to this day and the next acquisition came in 2004 for foot action literally where i'm standing used to be foot action and they acquired it for 350 million dollars they bought like 350 foot action to be honest in today's inflation that will be approximately 541 million dollars in 2023 not 2024 foot action had all the j's matter of fact this particular foot action the old stomping grounds they had a flight 23 store so they sell jordan threes like these even the substitutes was in the building i mean if you're looking for ear jordans especially ear jordan ones they got you at least they had you we'll talk about that later and the other side of the flight 23 store and foot action sold regular shoes you got your nikes you got your adidas you got your new balances also pack loaded and one of the unique features of working in that store you didn't have to wear the uniform you wasn't a striped guy you was whatever you had on that day you just pulled up to work but unfortunately foot action folded they closed it was shut down Foot Action began closing its doors in 2021, but the final closure happened in 2023. And the reason was, is to streamline the operation and focus on the core brand. You know what else closed in 2023? It was East Bay. East Bay became part of Foot Locker back in 1997. The whole goal for East Bay was to have an online presence, and that they did. They had an online presence. Not only that, they also sent monthly magazines to your doorstep. Back then, East Bay was a mail-in catalog, so you could literally buy shoes that you see in the building. However, the shoes 
always start at retail. And then over a period of time, they start reducing in price. And if you remember growing up in the 90s, credit card wasn't a thing. You literally had to write a check or convince your mom to, yeah, I'm good, thank you, bro. Or convince your mom to write a check to order these or these. They had Jordan 12, they had Jordan 13. So most notable shoes I remember seeing in the building like Jordan 12, the Cherries. I remember seeing the Barclays CB9. They had Griffey's, they had a whole bunch of things. They had colorways like this, but it wasn't like you couldn't find them. And you can also find the retros of these powder blues, the 2010 version, but I doubt the 2093 pair was available because in East Bay wasn't a thing until 97. And there was one acquisition that Foot Locker purchased that may rub a few people the wrong way. And that acquisition was GOAT. Make up my bed in the straight to the digits. Joke up a joke say this is acidic. So I take a shot with the lemon and ginger. Look in the mirror like, yeah, I'm not. Look in the mirror like, I'm fitted. Acquisition could be a harsh word. Foot Locker technically don't own GOAT. They just invested into GOAT. They invested $100 million into Go and Go at the time owns Fight Club. It's literally an online marketplace for sneakerheads or a like minded community for sneaker enthusiasts. And that acquisition came from left field, at least for sneakerheads and lovers of sneakers. Because on one hand, you got an authorized retailer, and on the other hand, you got a reseller. How do those two meet with great synergy? They're like polar opposites. Because on one hand, Foot Locker won't be the good guy. They want to sell you this for retail, $190 out the door, maybe a few upsells, maybe sneaker cleaner, laces, et cetera. But on the other hand, you got GOAT, and GOAT is literally upcharging you to purchase sneakers like these, especially if they're limited. Now, how does that work? How does one company pull you from one end, then the other company is pulling you from the other? That's confusing, but it's not confusing to gamblers. There's actually a term called hedging your bets. Hedging your bets is like you bet on one team to win, but then you bet a smaller wager on your team to lose. That way, the outcome could be somewhere in the middle. And I think that's what Foot Locker did by investing that amount of money into GOAT. And if you let Foot Locker tell it, they're saying they're leveraging GOAT for their digital expertise, online marketing reach, and focus on their authenticity. And combining GOAT strength with Foot Locker, global network of physical stores, and strong brand recognition seems to be a synergy. You are burning both ends of the candle. And that's exactly what they want. Foot Locker's not shy of the acquisition. They actually purchased two other companies in 2021. Purchased the Atmos brand. And y'all know Atmos. Atmos did a lot of collabs with Nike. They did the Air Max ones. At least that's one of the shoes I can remember top of my head. But here in Foot Locker, I had to show this shoe. This is my favorite basketball shoe of 2023. And in this Foot Locker, we can call this the small Foot Locker. The dude got the John Moran hitting for $100. Not the cheapest I've seen it, but it's actually on sale. And they got a whole bunch of Air Max ones on sale. $80 for these and same price for those. And these comfy walkers, these vapor max, these are dope. Price is okay. I mean, coming from $210, this is not a bad deal. I did own a Atmos Air Max. It was the Air Max 2 Lite, multicolored, dope shoe. Got it for affordable price. You guys wanna take a guess on how much Foot Locker paid for Atmos? It was $360 million. Foot Locker wasn't done acquiring stores. That same year, they acquired WSS, warehouse shoe sales, for approximately $750 million dollars in cash so that makes over a billion dollars in acquisition in 2021 alone and warehouse shoe company is a west coast athletic footwear and apparel retail so now they got a presence in both the west and east and these obviously are hitting for 80 dollars one of my favorite hoop and basketball shoe this is not a bad deal so there's two foot lockers in the mall that foot locker we just left was a kids foot locker and the foot locker we was at earlier is the big foot locker so you got the bigger brother and the younger brother and not many malls is going to carry two foot lockers like my mall the Florida Mall. Foot Locker's plan to close 400 stores. Currently, there's 800 stores, and Foot Locker's plan to close 400 of them by 2026. And Foot Locker is stating that it is part of the Lace Up initiative. Foot Locker aims to optimize their store footprint by closing unperforming mall stores and opening new stores in more strategic locations, similar to what Nike does with the Nike community stores. Foot Locker plans to increase its focus on their core banners, such as Foot Lockers, Kids Foot Lockers, Champ Sports, while potentially diversing from unperforming subsidiaries like they did with Foot Action in East Bay. But what do that say about about WSF. You know, the company that just purchased along with Atmos. You see, Foot Action, they purchased several years ago. Eventually, they diverged from them. It's no longer a thing. East Bay, 
that they were literally married to for online presence is no longer a thing. They're gone as well. Now WSS, which is a West Coast thing, we don't know what's gonna happen to that because we don't know what's gonna happen in the sneaker market. A few years ago, they're predicting that the sneaker market is gonna be a hundred billion dollar industry. Fast forward to today, shoes are not selling. All these companies that these stores acquire is to create a diverse portfolio. Like I said, heads in your bet. The future will only tell what's gonna happen with WSS. At the moment, people are not buying shoes like they typically were back in the early 2000s. And matter of fact, for the last four years, prices were skyrocketing. Now they are plummeted drastically. Shoes are going on sale. People are fighting for the consumer wallet. No different than JD Sports, no different than Foot Locker. But now you got all these acquisitions and you gotta utilize them to maximize on the profit of the investment you just made. If people are not buying shoes for retail, more likely they're not gonna pay resale. But what's gonna be happening to gold? In 2019 to 2023, they probably make their money back. But what's gonna happen to gold moving forward? Because if people's not paying retail for shoes, do you think they're playing resale? I don't know. You let me know. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yo, man, and I'm gonna see y'all in the next building. Peace.